So ever since the release of the Acolyte official trailer has been receiving endless backlash from true Star Wars fans, fans that really do support George Lucas's vision and his philosophy of what Star Wars actually stands for. Basically, we have people like Kathleen Kennedy, Leslie Headland, the showrunner and the director of the series, running into damage control over the Acolyte show, which by the way is still due for release on June 4th of 2024. To be honest with you guys, I think that their marketing campaign for the series was actually put out there way too late. They waited way too long. This trailer existed for well over a year at Star Wars Celebration and they refused to release it officially across the board for obvious reasons. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. So, we know that Leslie Headland, at least as far as I'm concerned, is way more extreme than Kathleen Kennedy is when it comes to her beliefs, when it comes to what Star Wars needs to be transformed into, quote unquote, and how Leslie Headland is taking full on inspiration from Ryan Johnson and The Last Jedi and the sequel trilogy movies, and how she basically found ways to implement that into the Acolyte show. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just the beginning of everything here and what's really going on with the Acolyte series. Now, one thing about all of this is that we know that Bob Iger is also really panicking about the Acolyte series because this is yet going to be another failure for 2024 on Disney's hands. They already dealt with a lot of failures in 2023, and this is not bringing them to a good start to begin with. So let's get into this, shall we? Now, specifically with all divisions at the Walt Disney Company showing no signs of a resolution in sight, one major development has to do with Lucasfilm and the recent Acolyte trailer backlash. Now, recently, director and showrunner of the series, Leslie Headland, had to deliver the following to the fandom. As a feminist and one who supports fem fem feminism, this was probably the greatest opportunity that I was given by Kathleen Kennedy and how it allowed me to share my vision of what Star Wars should really be all about. There is a ton of unnecessary noise from a small group of fans that obviously just fear or are afraid of diversity and equality in a series as big as this one, which I think is just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's 2024, it's about time female roles are accepted in a story as big as Star Wars, you know? I mean, that's just common sense, or at least it should be. We wanted to do something different this time by changing elements of the classic canon material that George either endorsed or created well over 20 years ago, and I couldn't be more excited to share the twists and turns that will change Star Wars history with the world. The obvious problem here is I think Star Wars fans really have no idea what they truly want in an ever-evolving franchise that's as big as this. As someone who supports fem feminism and takes that seriously, I knew going in that we had to adapt this franchise to fit better with the modern world and Disney's support of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Other words, DEI, by the way, guys, is what she's referring to. We are altering the tradition, she says, of Star Wars that I think at first will feel different to loyal fans, but in the end, they will come to accept with what we have created. Myself and Kathy really shook hands on how we really wanted to model the series after hit films like The Last Jedi by Ryan Johnson and The Force Awakens by J.J., and just how the entire sequels represented a new take on the franchise. But we wanted to take it a step further than that. This is going to be something very different that moves away from George's style of Star Wars. It was important to me to sort of combine movies like Frozen, Kill Bill, The Matrix, and others, and how those elements could work itself into the Star Wars show. And it worked greatly, I would confidently say. This will have a bigger impact on the fandom than how Empire Strikes Back did. The twists and turns in this story will absolutely change Star Wars in a way that I think it will be a transformed franchise practically overnight. The behavior that comes from some of these so-called fans that I think are just posers making believe to be fans is irresponsible and offensive to creators like myself that were inspired from other creators as well like JJ and Ryan who handled the sequel movies very well. I would also like to put it out there that Kathy was a superstar with the series. She had so much creative involvement in this thing as a producer and how the series would flow. It wasn't just me, but I have to give 
a ton of credit to Kathy for really handling this production so well on how we could change the Star Wars format and how fans have seen this for well over 40 years at this point. So guys, let me stop here before I move on about what Leslie Headland is getting at when it comes to the Acolyte series. So basically what she is doubling down on here when it comes to her view or her viewpoints of this community of true Star Wars fans, I should say, that support Lucas and his vision is that they don't matter, that they should be excluded, that they are a minority, they are a small group of fans that are making noise. That's all that she sees them as. And basically she has pretty much confirmed this, you know, month by month up until the release of the Acolyte trailer that this series would be something that would really transform Star Wars and quickly so. And I think that what that translates to is what Ryan Johnson basically did with The Last Jedi of how it heavily divided fans to the point where there really were no true fans left throughout the years that supported Disney Star Wars anymore. A lot of fans gave up on that. There's a lot of fans that really want nothing to do with Kathleen Kennedy's version of Star Wars and who she hires to handle these projects, right? So that's another thing there is that she seems very overconfident in the show. She seems very egotistic, I guess you could say, when it comes to herself as a director and the showrunner of this thing, you know, really putting Star Wars in a new era. And that's another thing that I think a lot of fans need to be aware of, is that this does take place before The Phantom Menace, and they're already running into damage control by putting an exclusive look for this series in front, and I'm not joking, in front of the re-release of The Phantom Menace, making it as if it's a true prequel to the first prequel film. And in reality, it really has no exact connection per se. It's just a marketing stunt by Kathy and Leslie. So moving forward from that, she goes on to conclude, fans just blow everything out of proportion with this franchise, that it's just straight up childish behavior to act in such a way. I say, let the creators do whatever they want to really create a new original spin on this franchise and how we can find a way to create new fans. So it seems like Kathy and others out there like Charmin Chinoy of the Ray Star Wars film, and in this case, Leslie with the Acolyte, they are all about creating new fans. All right, those are their favorite words, new fans. And they've said this about the sequels, they said this about the Ray movie up and coming, and they've also been endlessly spewing this out with the Acolyte series. And it's not gonna change with Skeleton Crew, it's not gonna change with any of the other upcoming Star Wars shows that are obviously gonna be all agenda driven. So again, Leslie Headlam once again tarnishing the brand beyond you know what it already was it was already tarnished to begin with i don't know how much more you can really damage this franchise i mean the ratios all right uh, across the board for the acolyte series it has gotten ratio beyond belief that honestly i think speaks volumes it's not just fans that are listening to others to do that really genuinely speaking a lot of fans are just really not impressed with that trailer not impressed with leslie's words so overall guys you know drop a comment below fill me in below in the comments what you all have to say about this and if you guys did enjoy the content for today make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel and i will catch you guys later and